take my glasses off. I'm more phonogenic without them. Sure. What's your, what's your name for starters? My name is Joe Pasek. Spell your last name for me, Joe. P-A-S-E-K. Okay. What's a good number we can reach you? You got a cell phone? Uh, yeah, well, I think my be uh, the best number is my home number, 716-693-2622. Joe, how'd you get all this started? How'd you get well, this thing here? Uh, it all started back in November of 2019. Uh, my daughter lives in uh, Fort Mill, South Carolina. And by coincidence, we were visiting her uh, and my grandsons. And... The Wall that Hills was visiting a uh, neighboring city, uh, Rock Hill. And uh, my wife and I and the uh, daughter and grandkids went down to see it. I was so impressed that this is so professionally done. It has all the features that the other traveling walls do not have. And it's operated by the same organization that operates the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. The other traveling walls are independent of that organization. So you brought it to the city here, what did they tell you? Well, what happened, uh, I filed a uh, application online because uh, that's the initial process. Uh, I gave them all the details about Chapter 77, the Vietnam Veterans of America. One of the questions they asked, has the wall that heals has ever been to Western New York before? And it hasn't. This was the very first time. And they travel around the country since 1996. And they visited over 600 different communities. So when they found out it hasn't been here, that was a plus. That was a big uh, benefit for us. So we applied, and that was uh, early stage of 2000, uh, uh, 2020, I'm sorry. And as we know, COVID came along and uh, they were able to have three visits throughout the country in the beginning of 2020, and then they had to cancel the remaining visits. Uh, and of course, they were disappointed. All these communities, just like us, were looking forward to it. Well, when we were selected, we were told, you may not be selected for 2021 because the cities that were uh, shut down for 2020 would have first priority for 2021. Sure. And we understood because that's only fair. And so we knew we may have to wait until 2022. But the uh, program manager called me up and said, Joe, you're in luck. There's a few organizations that cannot do it this present year. We can squeeze you in. So. We were lucky. Nice. Talk about community support, Joe. Oh, what did it take? Oh, it took a lot. Uh, I quickly organized a committee of Vietnam veterans here in Tonawanda, and we got the word out through the media. Scott Beeler, who is the owner of uh, West Her Auto Group, he quickly jumped on board. Uh, when he found out that there was an initial fee of $10,000, he said, I'm going to cover that myself. And we were just astounded by it. And then Tops Friendly Markets, they heard about it. And they said, we want to become a sponsor. And we said, we'd love to have you. And between Scott Beeler and Tops Friendly Markets, they, we have been covering most of the expenses. And then the community here, local citizens and uh, veterans organizations, uh, labor unions, they came forward and said, we want to become donors and we raised more than we ever expected and to cover additional fees for volunteer t-shirts, providing food for the volunteers, the printing of the programs, all the additional fees uh, which exceeded our initial expectation. What was your goal? What was your uh, fundraising goal for all of this? Uh, about 20,000. Gotcha. And we got about 26,000. Typical Western New York. Yes, it? yes, yeah. yes. Joe, it's as much about the wall being here. Sure, absolutely. As it is about, how, now how do I go and get it to Erie? <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can have that conversation, sir. Uh -huh. certainly, certainly. No, no question. Tell me about your response here so far, Tim. Um, our response here has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, the people have come out in numbers, whether it was the 176 vehicles that we had, uh, who rode with us for the escort or the 80 people who helped us set up. Uh, they've been coming in earlier than expected and much larger than uh, we anticipated that early, but it's gonna be an incredible weekend. There's a story every single person that walks up, and we've got our small crew from Erie, 
I'm so you hear it spot to spot to spot. I'm so just your heart. I mean, how do you explain it to people? You know, you, know you tell the stories because somebody's entrusted you to take a story with them, a personal story that they poured their heart out. You know, we had a young lady who, uh, a volunteer who helped somebody because the lady was has never been able to step down to the wall, and it was her childhood best friend, and she was finally able to come to the wall. And you hear that story, and, and the lady said, "I that I realized that that's why I'm here." And I said, "She trusted you with that story to carry it forward and to remember that, and that's our job as we do that." Sure. Just some bullet points. We'll have a much deeper conversation sure. going forward. But some bullet points on how a small town like Erie could get something like this. You know, the small towns are better. We like the small towns better. I mean, Buffalo certainly is a big community, but as a small town heart, uh, Erie is a bigger community. But our numbers and viewership is actually in direct proportion to the population. So usually, you know, a town 10 to 20, 30,000 is that perfect sweet spot for us because it's got some media that can help sell it. It's got the ability to make sure that it permeates through the sources and, and it doesn't get caught up in all the noise that happens in a big community. Sure. So having that, um, a small town is great. Right? We do obviously go to big cities, but having that showing that there's broad community support. You've got the VFW, you've got the Rotary Club, you've got the various different businesses, that this is going to be a community endeavor and it's not one group. And that when we have a committee meeting, we're bringing in you know all these different people who are going to make this successful. It demonstrates to us then that that's going to be a community-wide effort and it's not going to be an effort of how do you find your volunteers or how do you get the people there or anything else. And then last but not least is to sit there and say, we have some dates that we prefer, we have some dates that don't work for us, but other than that, we're open for it. Because if a community comes in and tells us, hey, we only want you here on May 19th, and we can't be in here, we, can't, we obviously can't then make it. But open and uh, coming and visiting it and realizing the enormity of the task to make this happen is the big piece. And get your application in in a hurry, I would think. Right? Well, for next year, absolutely. We open up application processes in um, May, so Memorial Day weekend is when we open them up. And they're open up until we build the schedule. We'll start building the schedule for next year, this coming month, so in August. And we'll start building out from a couple of dates and then winding that in. Not having an application in by August doesn't mean you're not gonna get it. It just means that, hey, we may have already moved through your area in the schedule schedule building and missed out on the opportunity to have it. So the earlier the better. But community support is huge. Knowing that you've got a community base that's Correct. rallying around this Absolutely. is the key. Well, and the flexibility and knowledge that uh, you know what the program is about. You know that it is an entity unto itself. It doesn't work with other you know, programs. It doesn't work with a county fair. It doesn't. It it's going to bring in thousands of people, and it doesn't need to be part of another sideshow. And uh, having that uh, flexibility on those dates is huge too. Beautiful. Awesome. Getting your name. So I know sure. A drawback here is that this was a reclaimed baseball field, and they only just filled in some of the holes yesterday when we set up. Well, we definitely the, have a football field. Right. <laughs> but it's right tough But it's tough sometimes to get the football players to give them up. Right. So football field in size at a minimum. But the flatter, the better. You saw the lady that I was helping back away from the wall. They have a really hard time. And a lot of people will go, well, the solution is golf carts. Well, the best way to piss off a site manager and make the visitors angry is when you get a golf cart come scooting down here. And that's why we basically always stop the golf cart right at that row of where the benches are, because it generally most people can walk from there. And there are a few occasions where we have to bring somebody straight in, but that keeps the spirit and the sanctity of this part of the memorial to where it should be. Well, actually, we so, got football stadium. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's fine. But most, a lot of the football stadiums these days are the synthetic turf and they're not going to allow us to go into the stakes. And we're going to go look at stakes here in a second. So that's something to keep that's in mind. We got. One of the things that I think is a weakness of this site is their parking situation. A majority of their parking has to be at the high school. Now throughout the day, if people want to come and park here, that's great. They got the shuttle buses donated, which was fantastic for a ceremony. But most of the time, it's not too bad. But the problem is that then people are coming in from multiple directions rather than coming in in one place. So a good, concise parking situation allows you to not have to then utilize additional volunteers for parking. They have four or five people that are at the high school that are here that aren't at the wall that they have to then have as volunteers, which means you have to have more volunteers. Um, so that, 
this place is this is a very beautiful place to have it because there are no lights because the first thing that we're going to come to you is saying can we get that light out that light out that light out because the more you see this at darkness mm -hmm. and if you can make it back after dark or take a look on the social media the more powerful it is so we want it to be as dark as possible for that um, this layout is great because you get the depth of the wall so having the ability to stand there after leaving the visitor center and say oh my gosh Look how big this is. Have that experience that you all have had at the wall in Washington, D.C. We can replicate that in your hometown when we have a park that's that deep and goes from there. So those are some things as far as this layout that I need you guys to keep in mind. Okay. Let's all sneak behind the wall real quick. And okay. We're creating here. That's really kind of that sanctity area um, that we like to have in that depth. It's great. We usually put out about four to five benches. Uh, no one's getting any younger, so those benches allow for some reflectivity, um, and yet they're not right up on the wall um, in that regard. We generally put out four donation boxes. One of the things that's within your contract is that there cannot be any sales or other donations that happen on the site, okay? Mm -hmm. We're obviously a nonprofit organization and we exist for that. About a third to 40% of the cost associated with bringing the wall comes because people are generous to put money in there. And so we don't wanna have food sales, obviously, but t-shirt sales or any other thing. Understand your chapters and stuff all need to have money coming in. We ask for the four days that we're set up, five days that it doesn't happen. And that's what those donation boxes. The donation boxes also are a great opportunity because that's where we put the rubbing forms and that's where we put the information sheets for people to find out about it. And it's a good central location in that. So this is the back side of the wall. One of the things when you think about the layout and, and the structure of where you're gonna put the wall is, we try to make it so that people don't see this. It's not totally unsightly, but it would be horrible to have a parking lot behind here and have people walking here and not seeing this. And in fact, their original design had it set up in such a way that they actually, I think they wanted to stretch from here to here to here. And I was like, well, everybody's gonna walk up off the backside. And they said, well, that's facing the river. Well, no one's really gonna come on the river. They're gonna come in and see this and let's blow them away when we did. So the layout is important to make certain that they get the best impression and you're not seeing behind the curtain as it is. Down the entire length of the wall, so 185 feet, we have to be on a soft setup and these stakes here are 16 inches long, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna obviously call before you dig if it's a, and have sprinklers marked. We can work away around them, but those go in 16 inches in order to make that. And then where you see those straps go in, those go in two feet. That's for a high wind if we ever have a real bad issue with winds, and that helps us stay together in that regard. Somebody put that on wrong. The wall arrives with the big parade on Tuesday. Um, we ask that uh, you work with a local ride club to come up with an escort route. The guidance is that that should be about an hour away from the final location. And uh, that is uh, usually Patriot Guard or combat uh, veterans. There's a lot of motorcycle groups up here. We had 176 riders that escorted us in. That's so it was good. a good group. They did a good job of getting it to the American Raid Legion riders or anything else. I think their only weakness here is that they didn't get to just the general riders. So they didn't go to the Harley Davidson dealership and say, hey, come join us or anything else. So we had a couple people came up to us and said, hey, we're not, we didn't feel like we're not a member of the club. How do I come do that? I got my son's bike group ready to go. Yep. So that's, I mean, so that's important. So they come up with the route in. You then provide that to us two months out and say, hey, this is our proposed escort route. We work with our trucking companies to say that it's good to make sure it's safe and passable for us. Once they have that, then you can start setting that up and it goes through there. I would encourage that route to be the lowest, slowest, old town, downtown scenes that you can get away with. Because when they came through downtown up here and they had all gathered right beside the courthouse and everything else and everybody had a chance to accept that parade, one, your Vietnam veterans on the bikes finally had a homecoming parade. 
but two, it gave everybody the chills that said, okay, this is awesome coming through. It doesn't do us very good when we're going 45 miles an hour down the state highway. It just doesn't have the same effect as when you go low and slow in that way. So I would strongly recommend as you do that. Fairview, um, Mill Creek, and in the area. Yeah. So on Wednesday, starting usually in the morning at 8, 830, we set up the wall. Um, the guidance is that we need 25 to 30 young, able-bodied people to make that happen. No disrespect, gentlemen, <laughs> at <laughs> all. I'm glad you no said that. No disrespect. <laughs> that's the hardest thing that our oh, hosts yeah. have to do. Well, because we... there are people like you who say, gosh darn it, I can do this. Yeah, can. And, and, they, and they want to. And they it's can. great. I'd love to have you do it because I want you standing next to the 20-year-old to be able to say, this was my buddy that I went to school with, and we're going to carry his panel together. I love having you all there because you get to carry your buddy's panel or your, you know, your battle buddy or your classmate's panel. Those are awesome. But that shouldn't count in your 25. Your 25, they had the UAW here. They had the local fire group here. They had all, they found that 25. They had 40 some volunteers here yesterday, but it was supplementing Right. 25 hardcore because each of these things has to get laid out all of those stakes have to go in and it takes the entire setup takes about six six and a half hours mm -hmm. in this kind of weather mm -hmm. so or worse i mean so that's kind of some of those things to do so the schools are okay but sometimes the kids don't have that effort your, in them. your fire companies would come yeah. through. Well, if the fire companies would do it that's great but well, i mean they have the army and the navy and the air force I mean, yeah the rotc uh is okay the problem is most kids don't have that tenacity to be able to do it depends yes. sometimes we have great setups with kids oftentimes it's better to use the schools for the takedown because it's a shorter time period on sunday because it's only three hours yep. and it's more brawn you still have to pull everything out and everything else but it doesn't have to be as exacting right. because to a high school kid well this is straight enough but to you and I, it has to right. be absolutely right on because we want it to look like one giant piece of granite. So that's kind of the difference in who you want to have come right. do it. Sure. Within 200 feet of the apex, you have to have 110, 20 amps power service to power the lights in the wall. And it has to be non-GFI. Usually you can find an electrician who'll look the other way and set it up because obviously the code says it's supposed to be GFI, but there's so much moisture and everything else um, that it, that's it. I was here last night at 11.30 when we blew the fuse on this because we're at 225 feet and our amperage was just too high and we had to redo it. So within that distance, now it doesn't have to be landline. Oftentimes hosts will bring in a generator, a quiet generator, and they'll put it 100 feet out. Uh -huh. That way when they're at the wall, you can experience all that. Um, but you're with close enough that you can run the lines right to it. You just refill it a couple times throughout the week and it is an equipment company is always eager to donate something like that because they can then be a sponsor and it's free to them to donate it and it's you know easy to do. So that's something to look at in that regard. used as the backdrop for the events and we encourage it because how often do you get to have the wall as a backdrop they originally wanted to do their ceremonies over there in the cover and i'm like why do it over there when you have a beautiful yeah, wall here to use it here that was this, our fallback so. for rain but this was our first choice and this is where it ended up being so the wall is a perfect backdrop and i have someone on the ladder who's not supposed to be on the ladder um the uh the VVA chapter here has put up this tent and it's equipment and displays of Vietnam veterans, etc. It's, it's okay and I probably would have moved it a little closer had they asked me. But um, one of the things that you'll get pressured from is from organizations and companies and sponsors to say, hey, we want to set up a tent because we want to talk about the American Legion or we want to talk about the VFW or we want to talk about once you do one you have to do them all and once you do it then they're going to start selling memberships or poppies or whatever else and then it becomes a problem in that regard so my recommendation to you is just say no to everybody and say hey we're all here for the wall we want to have you as a part of it but recognize that we just can't have all the organizations there um, but we'll give you the credit for that you can do something like this this works the drawback is we don't control it so we don't know what it's accurate and then when there's stuff out there that's not accurate historically or otherwise then they're like well wait a second i just read over there that there's 40 brothers on the wall and you say over there it's 44. well 
I mean, it just becomes one of those conflicts that you're always working out. But it does work. I mean, it's nice, and people get to put on the helmet and everything else. So it's, there are some features to it. Um, the Vet Center um, is an awesome program. I was a yeah, huge have. advocate for it. I love them. I used to lobby on Capitol Hill, and I got them millions upon millions of dollars. They suck when it comes to the wall that heals and oh, coming man. out to these events. They suck. You all know this as combat veterans yourselves. There's no damn way that you want to walk away from the wall and go walking into that trailer in any size community, but especially a smaller community. Those guys need to be down here walking around and seeing when a guy is tearing up and seeing and making friends with the volunteers that are in their shirts so that they can say, you know what? He's having a hard time. Would you go over there and just check in with him? And all of a sudden they can make and pick up that dialogue with them. And they probably then have a new vet who's gonna to come to one of the group counseling sessions and everything else. That's the magic that happens. Too often, 99.5% of the cases, they sit over there handing out their squeeze balls and everything else. And again, it's unfortunate. Um, I don't, we don't have a problem with them coming. We love, they wanna come. It's just unfortunate it's one of those things that you're like, okay. Um, so there, we always place them in such a way that they're close enough but not right in the way and they always want to try to get closer and i'm like i'm not going to have you closer just to sit there behind your table so that's one of the pieces you'll get a lot of other organizations and groups that want to come out and join you again be careful once you do one and we ask that you run those by us whenever one of those approach you the great thing i want you to look out here is how awesome their volunteers are marked bright bright neon right. shirts i'm yeah, not saying they have to be bright lime green but having something that you can clearly say when you walk away from the visitor center with a slip in hand that says go find your buddy on panel 11 west line 81 see a person in a green shirt you know how to see it some hosts want to get name tags well that's fine but it doesn't work the only drawback of green shirts is you can't wear them over parkas but you know generally especially if you get it in good weather up here where you guys are at you're going to be able to wear these most of the time so great to have that sort of thing to clearly identify it Volunteers are a huge aspect. It takes usually, our suggestion is it's usually about four hour shifts, a three to four hour shifts. Sometimes they can go as much as six at night. There is a long standing tradition and y'all had said you've been with the walls in the past, but we're gonna be on night watch. There's no watches. We're all here as ambassadors. We're all here to make certain that everybody has the best experience. Fortunately, we don't have to protect anything anymore. Fortunately, we now have to say, how can I help a brother get to the wall how can i help a mother get to the wall and make that hat so that's the attitude you should have yes guaranteed our vietnam veterans are still our best source for the coldest wettest darkest nights because they want to be out there to relive the old days and that's fine so that's the purpose notice their volunteer tent and placement is way over there on the other side of the truck it should be set up in such a place that it overlooks the whole area but not in such an obvious place that everybody wants to walk to it and get the snacks you want to have your drinks and your snacks there because you want to have that time and time again for it um, but that is uh, something that's over there and out of the way the careful delicate balance is you don't want the guys and gals to be over there having their coffee and hanging out and not being engaged out here at the wall so that's it that other tent that you see is our visitors tent our visitor center tent that's a new thing that we created because of covid and we like it so much we've kept it around that's that one point of contact where you can come and have the, somebody look it up in a book you can answer your questions if you don't walk directly to the wall. So that's been a, um, a change to us. One more stop and then I'll let you guys in. It's incredible. Uh, all right, so this is the Mobile Education Center. Everything that is out on the, on the grass here is in this trailer. So this is the only trailer that comes. This is the trailer the truck hauls in and everything else. It is very rare for us to have a truck that stays with the trailer while we're here, very rare. Um, but in this case, they stayed, the trucking company does. We give them the option and we actually like it because then the little kids have an opportunity to go in and tour a truck. And the big kids have an opportunity to go in and tour a truck. So it's cool to do it. It's great for the trucker. Uh, so that, it doesn't always stay that. So I don't want you to keep in your mind that you got to place a truck. But within 150 feet of that truck, we need to have this 220 service for the trailer and 220 50 amp service that we run to that. Again, it can be a generator. In this case, the city put in a new pole for us to, to tap into. But that's that service that uh, serves the trailer and everything else. So important in that regard. This parking lot is supposed to be for handicapped only. Um, motorcyclists love to park wherever they want to park. So unfortunately, they just blocked the whole thing here. 
But this is where they have their bus, um, their their bus drop off here. If you're fortunate enough to get the wall during the school year, we have an education coordinator who will help you do the outreach and planning for education for kids. We can run as many as 1,600 kids through here on the Thursday and Friday. We'll provide two of our team members, we always have two there anyway, who are trained to teach in every level, basically from third all the way up to high school, and teach at their level. And we can run up to 100 kids an hour through throughout that time period. And so basically the kids would come in on a bus up to 100 at a time. We divide them into three stations. We run them through each station of the Mobile Education Center and the wall. And in an hour, they're back on the bus and the bus can make a cycle and pick up more kids and go. So if you want to make it an educational piece, that's a piece that you have to do. Keep in mind, if you do that, having a ceremony like this carves out three hours that we can't do that. You can't do it for the ceremony hour, you can't do it for the hour before or the hour after. So it's a balance of saying, well then let's do our ceremony at five o'clock or let's do our ceremony. So that's one of those pieces to um, play along with the education, but that's something we do. We will do expanded tours throughout the week and we'll just basically grab a group of people and do expanded tours. But again, that, that's an option that you have if you decide, hey, we wanna make sure we do this as a piece. Obviously in Erie, you guys have a temperate climate, so it's not as, you know, it's a little bit more concerning um, for late spring, and they're also testing, so it's really hard. But if that's something that you guys want to do, you look towards the fall and say, hey, we want to do more of a fall date and do that. When we ask you, so, so the application process, and we'll close on that and I'll take any questions. The application process is open now. Um, Cynthia and I will start going through the applications here in August, and we'll start looking at the applications. As we said earlier, the big things that we're looking at First is their broad community support. Have you reached out to the organizations and this is a coalition of the VFW, the Marine Corps League, the station, all this other thing. This is who's bringing this in and this is what we're gonna do it on. Have you visited a site? Question number two. Have you visited a site and met with a site uh, director? Do you understand the, the situation that's going on? And obviously I'm gonna report back to the group on hey, I had a great walkthrough with the Erie folks and here's the deal. Have you visited a site? Three, do you, have you demonstrated that it's an entity and a program unto itself? It's not part of a situation that we need to come in for the Cherry Blossom Festival or the Apple Festival or the County Fair. It's really and truly an entity of itself and doesn't have to be. And then the last thing is, are you open and flexible with your dates? I want you to tell me we'd like you to have a, this date and this date and this date. Or tell me you can't come this date because it's the Polish Festival or whatever this situation is. I want you to tell me those dates. But if you can't tell me, hey, we're open and flexible, then if I can't make it one of your three dates, then unfortunately you might not make it next year or whatever year you put in for it. So, all right. Any thoughts?